From Ride the West Horse Expo in Spokane, Washington, Rainsman presents part five of a 13-week series with Sharon Camarillo. This week, Sharon addresses several problem-specific corrections for the barrel horse. The quickest way to improve a horse's performance is to improve the rider's performance. And by using effective hands, seat, and legs, your riding aids will certainly make an effective outcome. Stay tuned, because as we come back, we're going to talk about problem-specific correction and applying those good rider aids. Just a little story. I was about 30 years old when I really learned to ride or started the process of learning to ride. Now, before that, I had won some intercollegiate championships and even traveled to the national finals as a competitor. But did I know how to ride? Did I know how to identify the problems that I was having? Did I know how to um, evaluate my competitive runs to see where my strengths were and where my weaknesses were and how to effectively correct and strengthen my weaknesses? No. So we're going to talk today about some problem-specific evaluation and ways to correct and strengthen the effectiveness and the consistency in your barrel racing horse. We always have to focus in on using the aids that we learn as a, as a horseman, our hands, our seat, and our legs. We need to use those aids to keep connection with our horse because the control really comes through our hands, down the reins, to the bit, to the horse's body. If the horse isn't moving in his feet, we can't steer him. So irregardless of what the head is doing, I want to make sure that the horse's feet are moving. Once the feet start moving, then I can start to balance out the head. In one of our previous lectures, we talked about the five easy pieces. From the nose to the shoulder is zone one. The shoulder is zone two, the rib cage is zone three, and the hip is zone four, zone five being the horse's ability to drive forward from the hind end and move his feet. And we need to learn our aids in being able to control the zones on the right side and on the left side. Supple, straight, and strong is a little cue that you'll hear us say. First, we need our horses not only supple laterally, supple through zone one, the neck, the shoulder, and most important, in the rib cage. We also need our horses supple longitudinally, which is through the pole, neck, and back. Once we get our horses supple, and we maintain the resource to be able to control zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four, then we can position our horses straight. Once they're straight, we can ride them strong. Supple first, straight second, strong third. How many of you have horses that feel like they're out of your hand? They're either behind the bridle or they're ahead of the bridle. They're behind, you can't steer them. They're not moving, no impulsion. Any of you feel that on your horses? I want you to start to identify some of the things you're feeling. If you're riding an ex-race horse, you may feel a horse that's ahead of the bridle. He's running through the bridle. Anybody feel like you're always having to pull on your horses? Okay. We want to maintain attention, focus. Any of you feel like you're that Verizon commercial, commercial that says, can you hear me now? Hello, I'm on your back. Anybody feel that? How about when you go somewhere and the horse is worried about the trailer, the tractor, and the lights, and everything else besides you on the back? You ever feel that? How about when you separate your horse from his friend and he has separation anxiety and he's riding along here winning for the other horse? You, don't, you never feel that, do you? <laughs> How many of you, when you go to uh, run a barrel pattern, you can't get your horse in the arena? And he runs backwards, right? No focus. He says, nobody's on my back, and I'm on my own. So what I want to do is regain the horse's attention through a little double-down exercise. First of all, the feet have to be moving. And just like a wheelbarrow, the front end has to move so the hind end has a place to go. Front end moves by even leg pressure from the calf 
at the cinch. Bump, bump. Respond with pressure. Reward with release of pressure. She's moving forward. I have no pressure at her rib cage. Whoop, she's not moving that front end. Respond with pressure. Reward with release of pressure. Now, once she's moving the front end, now I want to disengage the hind end. So inside leg, back in the inside flank. Watch the outside hawk. It's stepping out. It's disengaging. Now I've got a little light pressure on the inside rein, and I'm asking this horse to do nothing more than to move forward, follow my rein. Six circles. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All of a sudden she's saying, golly, okay, you are on my back, aren't you? Okay, you remind, hello, can you hear me now? She remembers I've, I'm on her back, she has some control, and now I'm gonna go right back into the task at hand with her focus on me. Any place, anywhere, anytime, you feel like you're losing your horse's attention and focus, take the time, double down, six circles. First of all, you gotta get the feet moving, get the position, maintain the forward motion, six circles, attention, and go right back to your task. In the art of barrel racing, we're gonna talk about three definitive positions. The approach to your barrel needs to be straight. The rate needs to be a shortening of the stride. And the turn needs to be precisely placed. Approach is straight, rate is a shortening of the stride, and the turn is prepared, planned, and productive. So how do we get that? We're going to go back to our skill drill exercises, and as a review, we're going to talk about how to ride a horse straight. But before we can get our horses straight, we've got to get them suppled. The shoulder in and out is a series of four cues. To practice my shoulder in and out, I'm going to shift my weight to the outside of the circle. Therefore, I'm elevating my left seat bone. I'm going to relax the outside rein. So there's no pressure on the outside of the horse, therefore, the body has the ability to move. Third, I want to change the position of the bit in the horse's mouth by merely rotating my wrist. Raise the right side of the bit up off the right tongue. And fourth, an elevation, feeling this mare, move away from the right rein, elevate the right shoulder. Pressure, response, release, reward back to neutral. Now I'm going to show the release of pressure as we go in the opposite direction. Weight comes to the inside, relax the inside rein, rotate the outside wrist, elevate the outside rein. Mare moves away the, from the pressure on the left rein, elevates the left shoulder. So you say, well, What's that going to do? That's going to work on suppleness to, be, to give me the opportunity to be able to ride and position my horse in straight. If she drops into the left, pick up the left rein, move her out to your straight line. And if she happens to drift out too wide, you can pick up the outside rein move her shoulder back underneath her, put her back into your straight line. Now that exercise, as any, will be taught in the direct control that your snaffle bit offers. With the aid of a martingale, and on this mare, we've got a little hanger snaffle that takes some of the pressure off of her tongue because she has the ability to drop away from a bit, to ride behind the bit. 
where a traditional snaffle wants to put pressure down on the horse's tongue, it creates, in many cases, an over-tucked horse where the jaw is dropping too much to the chest. So this has a hanger in it that picks that mouthpiece up off the tongue. And then this mare, because she has a tendency to get a little strung out in her rib cage and loses a little bit of collection at this stage of her training, we've put on the um, German martingale to aid in the collection. Now, if I feel like a horse is not moving off that left rein, then I'm going to do something that we call a reverse arc, which is an extreme exercise, but it reinforces the fact that when I pick up and request the movement of a shoulder, you need to give it to me. So those horses that have a tendency to really drop into that first barrel or the second barrel, if they're not responding to the sheer placement of your rein to ride straight, then you may say, ah, 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 what do I say? Get up off my rein, elevate the shoulder, and go back into the straight line. Remember, I'm on your back. Many times the serious problem when a horse, with a horse dropping his shoulder comes into that second barrel and your rider's over here pulling on the outside rein trying to get the horse out inside rein and your problem specific correction, reverse arc and right back on your pattern. The art of barrel racing, the approach, the rate. The rate is not a stop if it, it's a half halt. And it encompasses the fact that your horse needs to extend the stride in between your barrels and shorten the stride at your rate point. The first cone represents rate. I want to sit squeeze my legs to keep my horse moving through the turn, close my fingers, shorten the stride, lengthen in between, sit, shorten, squeeze, drive forward for impulsion, straight line, extension, sit, cue, shorten the stride, collection, squeeze, drive through the turn. Now the horse has to have impulsion to be able to do this. He needs to drive from the hind end through his spine to the pole. He needs to move his legs to carry his body forward. A horse can have extension without collection, but he can't have collection without impulsion. So how am I going to teach my horse that when I shift my belly button forward, he moves forward. And when I sit and relax squarely with my seat bones in the saddle, he shortens his stride. Again, it's a methodical base of skill drills. So what I want to do is work even off the trot in a nice big circle and utilize my arena as a training aid. The long trot at the post is a wonderful aid, A, to relax your horse, B, to create a nice length of stride, C, to relax the rider. And important, it takes some of the rider's pressure off the horse's back. So that extension of stride is important and as she comes off the ground with her outside shoulder in the right circle I'm working on my right diagonal all right now to start to introduce rate what I'm going to do first is sit sit soften the lower back the pelvis is my shock absorber to take away the concussion produced as the horse hits the ground. I want my shoulders relaxed and level, my joints soft, 
nice light contact with the horse's face through the reins to my hands. Almost like holding a little Tweety Bird. My reins are like a little Tweety Bird. Okay, as I sat down, close my fingers, I want her to shorten her stride. So she's coming back to a jog. Now to, again to ask her to extend, I'm going to straighten my pelvis up, push my belly button towards the saddle horn, go back on my extension, move her through my hands with a squeeze of my leg, and extend her stride. This is probably one of the most important elements of effective and efficient barrel racing is your ability to extend your horse and shorten your horse. Now let's see what it looks like at a lope. Make sure she's moving up in between my legs, that my seat bones are balanced on her back, that I've got her in between my hands and she's responsive to my leg. Once I feel that, then I'm gonna put her right back on the barrel pattern. Simple lead change, and I don't have my lead, so I don't wanna turn my barrel. I'm gonna put her right back out in the nice big neutral circle on the outside of our directional cones. So why go to the next barrel when the one you're on isn't correct? She's starting to feel better. She's responding to the rain. Now I'll let her travel through the barrel. Ooh, great. You get a little push in that bridle. We're gonna do a little problem-specific correction by stopping, backing her up to redistribute the weight toward her hind end. Which brings up an additional correction. Once we work on our lengthening and shortening skills, and as we start introducing speed, and we feel like the lengthening and shortening is effective, but when I really start putting speed on my horse, she's forgetting me. Whoa, well, when I sit and she doesn't come back, what about saying, whoa, Pressure on the reins means to shorten your stride. Pay attention to me. All right, that's an all left correction. Drop to a trot for a simple lead change. Let's work on the all right collection. Because the barrel race is your choice of one right and two lefts, or one left and two rights. Is she supple? Zone one, is the pole elevated above the wither? Is she supple and light in my hands? She's not ahead of the bridle, she's not behind it. Zone two, is her shoulder balanced in between my hands? Zone three, is she supple on the inside right rib? I feel her leaning to me just a little bit. A little pressure, shoulder, hip with my inside leg will soften that up. And once I feel she's all together, now I'm going to apply my tighter turn to the right, moving through, release the pressure back into our nice big right circle. Remember now, chin up, eyes forward, always look where you want to ride the horse's feet. Another all right, nice big relaxed circle. Balance your horse. She's wanting to push a little bit to the outside of the circle with her left shoulder, so I'm gonna to have to brace it just a little bit. Straight, strong, feels good. Smaller circle on your barrels. Keep her moving. She quit. Take the pressure away back into the big circle. That's fine. The key is knowing that each one of your runs produces the resort or the results of a report card. After you make your run, go through your checklist. 
How was my approach? Was it straight and balanced to my first barrel? When I sat down to rate my horse and shorten the stride, how productive was it? How was my turn? Was it going in in my planned, precise position? And did I leave close and straight with the first full stride to, to the next approach to my second turn? Evaluate your second performance. Did I get to my rate point? Did I shorten the stride? Did my horse move through the turn? Same way with the third, your approach, your rate, and your turn. How effective on the first, the second, the third barrel? Learn to read your report card. You have some time before your next performance. Once you make your evaluation, once you understand the importance of aids in controlling your horse, your hands, your seat, and your leg, you work on suppleness, not only laterally, but also longitudinally. You have your horse in the bridle, good balanced position, effective performance from the rider to the horse. Then you know which skill drills to apply to your next work session to be able to rebalance and repair your run. So it's just a matter of starting to study your skills and know how to utilize them. Rainsman is proud to bring you this 13-week series of Sharon Camarillo's Barrel Racing Clinic from Ride the West. Visit us at www.rainsman.com. For more information on Sharon's horsemanship and barrel racing clinics, visit her at www.sharoncamarillo.com. Next week, Sharon continues with these problem-specific corrections as her students ride for her. So join us again next week right here on Horse TV. The Sharon Camarillo series is produced by Advent Communications. Contact us at clinictv at aol.com.